up everybody you are listening to another episode of the rim break where we press on the brakes on life a little bit and appreciate some of the businesses around us i am your host albert and i am on my bicycle right now i'm on a uh, new little bike indoor trainer that i got converts your bicycle into a trainer so you can turn it into a stationary bike yeah i really like it you can bike indoors in the while it's raining outside and I get hit by cars. Yeah, it's real cool. But let's jump into this podcast. So today we're learning about the business theory and management side of rainbow sandals and just dig in a little deeper on the business theory side of things from management to sustainability to company culture. So uh, yeah, let's just jump into some some cool things that I that I saw while I was researching. It started out as a uh, with a very humble beginning. So Rainbow Sandals want to be the Levi's of the sandals world. Durable, functional, yet fashionable. And uh, I definitely think they achieved that goal. I wear my sandals for almost, or my Rainbow Sandals for almost any occasion. From lounging around, to going to the store, to traveling. My rainbows always end up in my bag. So let's talk about the uh, the founder, Sparky. Spar- Sparky is just a natural born hustler with his low startup cost, around $200. His entrepreneurial spirit, he would sell it at uh, his, his prototype sandals at events and use the money to make even more sandals. And the operation continued to scale up after many iterations, and now they're well known in the surf world and just popular in general. And uh, having such an inspirational leader like Sparky will definitely roll off on the employees that work with him. One of the early employees of Rainbow Sandals was uh, Pat Huber, and he is the marketing director as of 2015 uh, from one of my sources. And I'm uh, not sure if he's still with the company, but why would you leave such an amazing company, right? But on the uh, early days of Pat's job, he was just helping around the shop. From uh, picking up cigarette butts to cutting arches of the sandals. And uh, Sparky cared about, just cared a lot about Pat. And wanted him to go to school and get educated because Sparky never went. Sparky is uh, super humble. And uh, that he always says he's dumb, but Pat and basically everyone around him who talks about Pat uh, says Sparky is a uh, is a genius and just super smart. And that's a really interesting port- point here because there are a lot of really smart people who don't get degrees, and I don't believe that all degree holders are uh, not smart. They're educated, but not necessarily smart. I know a lot of college graduates who make a lot of dumb choices. And people, I just do not consider smart. You know, because it's definitely different from being educated and smart. They are two very different things. I think of like an educated person as a this person who knows how to play the educational uh, system and they find a way to pass. They know a little bit about a certain topic from being exposed to a lecture or books, but they're not smart, you know. But even uh, when those books are assigned to them, they probably won't even read it or open it. We'll find a way to get a bare, bare minimum to pass. And just try to pass that test. And those smart people, they can see the problem and they'll take small steps towards solving it and develop a solution to that specific problem. 
they understand the systems and what is truly going on and uh, they just understand what that operation is about and what's just going on they know how to fail and test again and again there's no greater test here for these truly smart people there's no comfort or Christian when they fail too if they fail they lose their money or they don't achieve what they wanted to solve an example would be I don't know like a scientist trying to cure disease there's no answers to trying to cure this disease no uh, bare minimum mindset to get through but they really have to get they really have to be smart to uh, with how they work how they work with the team because if they don't a lot of people are gonna get sick and they may lose funding for their project but I think I view as Sparky as a smart man as well he may not have book smarts but he's smart as in a, he's smart in his own way he developed a product that didn't exist and how to start from the ground up <sighs> man I'm getting pretty tired but uh yeah so Sparky's super smart he started with a sharpie to uh, trace his foot from a piece of foam and glue in it to make his first uh, prototype and uh, there's no person saying here here is the uh, the answer to making an extremely successful sandals company here are the materials you need instruction manual people to call type of glue you need how much you need to put nope there's none of that Sparky went out there and did all of the field testing and got some stuff done. It's amazing how uh, beautiful things can be when everything comes together. It may not happen right away, but over time, when you hunt the craft, amazing things can happen. I bet Sparky didn't even uh, imagine this would uh, would happen. Just have a successful company. Also, probably the people. Uh, he also probably didn't think that uh, he would have such a lot of customers. Or they would use them to the point where they're worn down to the uh, to the ground with holes in them. Uh, these customers are also sending them back to rainbows, and uh, with letters and photos of wh where they traveled with them, and he's framing them on the on the store in San Clemente. Really cool. And Sparky just seems like a really great individual to work with. Just really fun person to be around. So, uh, some major changes in the company. It's surprisingly difficult to find current news on rainbows. It just seems like they're doing their thing. They mind their own business, not really worry about what others think about them. So, no crazy news articles about rainbow sandals. Just lots of websites praising the quality of their sandals and why you should buy them. Uh, some recent changes, but well, not too recent. Uh, it was a 2015 article about rainbows and their event that they created in 2008. They are canceling it. The event was called uh, the Battle of the Paddle. It is a stand-up paddleboard racing competition, and it was considered the Super Bowl of SUP or stand-up paddleboard racing. And that event was held for about or heavily funded and active for seven to eight ish years and these events were legit they had athletes that were traveling just to compete uh, it's held in california and hawaii yeah lots of behind the scenes on that uh, setup it's really difficult to try to get like an international uh, just following get people to the event set up all that kind of money so yeah just a really small uh, really small uh, event just reaching and growing to become a very very expensive event to run so it's understandable that they had to uh, to cut the event and uh, from past experiences even a small setup can be very demanding and extremely time-consuming and challenging <laughs> you know uh, that's a uh, startup weekend oh my gosh that's crazy I can't imagine that like times 10 
So, yeah. Very, very expensive to set up events like that. And to be the main sponsor where you're using your own money, that will definitely take it to the profits of, uh, of Rainbow Sandals. The event Battle of Paddle did give priceless marketing for Rainbow Sandals. And it brought their uh, main customer demographics all together in one place, which is pretty amazing. It's great. It's a great party for everyone, but not Rainbow Sandals at the time. The event was not sustainable for the long run. It was a great event and brought up that SUP community together and did some good for the marketing of the sport. The, uh, the announcement did say Battle of the Paddle wasn't entirely killed off, but Rainbow Sandals weren't going to have, they were going to have very little to do with the uh, participation of organizing and funding the event. So it's going to take an entirely new different team to, uh, to to set up this event. Uh, some of the prominent faces behind the event included Sparky, Jerry Lopez, Pat, and Barrett. Sad news for the event, as of 2018, I cannot find any article or footage of the uh, Battle of the Paddle event. I will uh, read the announcement that Sparky, uh, he, he, he sent out an email canceling the, uh, the event a few years ago uh, to the SCP and Paddleboard community after nine amazing paddle, Battle of the Paddle events in California and Hawaii, we are sent to announce that the Rainbow Sandals will not be hosting the event for 2015. The BOP has enjoyed incredible growth since its inception. However, the economics of producing the event have become overwhelming and unsustainable for Rainbow Sandals. Please know that the BOP has been an amazing journey and experience for everyone involved. We thank all past competitors, sponsors, ex exhibitors for the tremendous support and participation. In addition, we want to acknowledge all local permitting agencies and safety personnel for allowing us to have such an event and making it safe for everyone to compete. And lastly, we want to express genuine gratitude to all volunteers and event staff for your generous service and effort making the BOP one of the greatest water sporting events ever. We sincerely appreciate everyone's love and support in this great endeavor and look forward to seeing you out on the water soon. Much aloha, Jay Sparky Longley and Jay Lopez. Yeah, sad to see that the event had to go, but it's understandable for, for the uh, economics of a company okay just turn real dark here let me move around this is funny there we go yeah i'm cycling in this garage and yeah if nobody's in front of the the light monitor thing you uh you just lose light and it's super weird and dark. Let's jump back into this. So uh, we're gonna jump into the uh, customer experience and uh, interview. This is my favorite part of the podcast. I love doing this customer experience stuff. So Rambo is obviously a product company and they, they, they're just known for a uh, great quality. Their Rainbow Sandals aren't good. They're not even great. They're not even, well, whatever. They are like insanely good. So good, in fact, that other companies can't even compete with rainbows. And that's what it takes to be a leader in an industry or any industry or in this industry or any industry, really. Well, I'm getting a little tripped up on my words, but that's all good. Uh, as a proud uh, rainbow owner myself, I am wearing them while I'm cycling right now. That's how much I like them. So I had them for about a year and some change. I can attest that these are just some of the best footwear I've ever owned. I literally wore them every day when I was abroad in the Philippines. Just so comfortable from airplanes to beaches to shopping centers to hot springs. My Rambos have been.